needed to get it into a standard deviation form. Uh, the, what's noticeable about this denominator is that it can accommodate different size sample sizes. So uh, if your sample sizes are, are somewhat different, then this will help uh, weight the standard deviation according to, uh, it'll give, it give, give a differential weighting based on which one's larger. My hunch is that most people simply calculate Cohen's D like this. They simply take the, the difference between the means and then they divide it by the sum of the standard deviations divided by 2. They don't use this formula. Even if their sample sizes are a bit different, they don't use this denominator. They just go straight to the standard deviations and they divide by 2. My hunch is that 90% of people who calculate Cohen's D just use this really basic formula. One thing that most people probably don't know, though, is that it's an upwardly biased estimator of the effect in the population. When Cohen's when Cohen first introduced Cohen's D, it was in the context of power analysis. And he wasn't really providing it as an estimate of a sample estimate in the population. It was something that you specified as what you expected to be the population parameter. Um, so I guess we might argue that uh, Co Cohen wasn't trying to do what people are using it for initially. And that's where Hedges G comes in. Hedges G um, demonstrated that Cohen's D is actually biased upwards and it needs to be corrected for that. And this is the correction that he introduced. So it's a fairly simple correction uh, and it's more evident in small sample sizes. And an example is that uh, when sample sizes are a total of 20, so let's say 10 in each group, the upward bias in Cohen's D is, is about 4% on average. And when the sample size, total sample size is 50, the upward bias is about 2%. So it's not a huge difference, but I would say it's a meaningful one. So given that it's relatively easy to apply Hedges G, why don't we use it? And it's an interesting question that Hedges G is nowhere near as popular as Cohen's D, even though it's the more accurate approach to estimating um, an effect size of this sort. And one of the reasons, as I suspect, is that Cohen provided guidelines for, for Cohen's D. He never really used the term Hedges G, in, at least in this paper, I don't believe. Uh, so small, medium, and effect, uh, effect sizes for Cohen's D, or Hedges G, are 0 0.20, is a roughly a small effect size, a medium effect size is 0 0.50, and a large effect size is 0 0.80 or larger. And I suspect that's why Cohen's D is so much more popular than Hedges G, is because Cohen gave some guidelines on interpretation, even though these guidelines are really just his gut feel about what he thinks a small, medium, large effect size is based on him reading papers in the behavioral sciences. And this is the actual paper that's cited extremely frequently. Uh, here's an example IQ study, and my phone's going off, so I'm just going to let that ring. Uh, so an example here for an IQ study is uh, if you had a group mean of a hundred, a group mean of 108, a standard de uh, a variance of 225, and a sample size of 21. All right, and then you had a group two, uh, a mean of 118, with a variance of 220 and a sample size of 18. All right, so it's an IQ study. These are the difference between the means. These are the variances. I could have expressed those as standard deviations, but because I'm using the, the more formal formula for, for Cohen's D, I, I thought I would express it this way. So this is how simple as it is for classes. Let's say I did classes delta. That's what it would be estimated, 118 minus 108 divided by 15. I just arbitrarily said that the um, 15 group would be the uh, control group. Uh, glasses uh, delta ends up being 0.667 in this case. Now Cohen's D is formulated this way and when you solve you get a negative 0.670 so it's arbitrary whether you put the the larger mean first or second um, as long as you understand what you're interpreting and your readers know what you're doing as long as you're clear about that whether you use the negative or the positive is, is arbitrary and then Hedges G, when you solve for that, uh, you end up with a negative 0.656. So it's actually smaller than Cohen's D, and the sample size here is about 20, 20, um, 21 plus 18, uh, so 39 in total. 
And the bias comes out to be about 2%. That's about a 2% difference between negative 0.67 and negative 0.656. Um, so again, why aren't we using 